Hi everyone, welcome to Xcoding with Alvian. In this short video, we're going to add interactivity to a home screen widget in iOS. So this is the existing widget that we are going to add the interactivity to. So this widget itself is a part of the news app, building news app tutorial series that I've uh, created in the previous years. So if you are interested, I've provided the link to the playlist in the description below. So this also includes a tutorial where we build the adding a widget to the home screen. Okay. So this is the widget that we have built. Basically, it shows all the latest fit from various categories such as technology or headlines or anything that the user can pick from this. Okay. They can customize the widget. So as you can see here at the top right, we have this shuffle button. So when I tap this, it's going to basically shuffle the articles here. Nice, right? So previously, this isn't supported in iOS 16 and below. But now with the iOS 17, Apple has added support where we can add the button, interactive button in here or a toggle where we can customize the behavior of this button or a toggle. Okay. So Without further ado, let's just begin and see how we can implement it, right? So to begin, please go to this repository. I have provided the description, Action is Live Widget, and then select this Starter Interactive Shuffle Widget Tag, okay? And then you can just download the project and open in Xcode. The, you will need Xcode 13 before you are able to follow this tutorial, okay? So please download Scott 15 from Apple Member Center first. So yeah, this is the project. I have already opened it. So let's begin. First, let me show you how we can basically add interactivity to our widget and what are the restrictions. So the first thing that you need to know is when you want to add a widget, you, there are only two options. As far as I know, when I have watched the WWDC videos bring widgets to life first is to use the button declare a button with this title and the app intent okay so basically to add interactivity to a widget you will need to use app intent framework you need to declare your app intent okay first one is this button title and intent so you declare this in your uh, widget kit view and then you just pass the intent that you want to get triggered. Okay. The second component is basically toggle. Okay. So if you see in this toggle, there is also this is on and intent as the parameter. So if you pass the intent, it will also trigger the app intent passing the state of the is on. So these are the two components that is currently supported on iOS 17 for adding interactivity to a widget. Okay. So that's the thing that we need to know at the beginning. So we need to basically use app intent framework to add interactivity to our widget. This app intent itself, I think it's a, this app intent itself, I think it's a new framework provided by Apple in the iOS 16 last year. Okay. It provides us a way where we can use this app intent to easily add Siri shortcuts, suggestions to our applications. Let's begin by creating our intent. So inside this action is widget shared, create a new folder intents and create a new three file. Give the name of shuffle articles, articles intent. For the targets, make sure all of the targets are selected, the main app and the widget extension target as well. Okay. So let's import app intense framework and then declare our struct shuffle articles intent make it conform to the app intent protocol so first requirement is to declare a static file title localized string resource in here i'm just going to hard code a string shuffle articles okay and next is we need to implement this perform and return the intent result. In this case, I'm just going to return this empty result. Okay. We don't need to return any result in this case. 
Okay, the bill succeeded. One thing is I want to add a parameter to this. If you remember in here, we have this different category for this some kind of widget, right? It's showing the latest speed. So this is technology, this is top headlines. So let's make this so that we can pass the parameter, okay? Which is the category. I'm going to declare this parameter property wrapper with the title of category. For, to simplify this, I'm just going to pass a string, okay? Because if you have different kind of type, you need to basically define, implement some kind of protocol. But in this case, the category itself is an enum, which is the actual string with the raw value of string, okay? So I'm just, to simplify, I'm just going to pass the string value. Okay, let's just create an empty initializer as well. And then let's declare a category in here with the type of string. And let's just assign self category with the category for the initializer parameter. Okay, that's the first thing we need to do. We let some logic later. Okay, but this is the first thing that we are we are implementing. I'm going to add some logic later, but yeah, this is the first thing that we need to do. So let's navigate to the article thumbnail view. Okay, so this article thumbnail view is basically this component. Okay, it will have this h tag. We will put an h tag with this title and then we put the button with the intent. Okay, so in here, let me first uh, uh, declare a struct shuffle articles button view. Okay, and let me just declare a let category with the type of category enum. And let's declare a body. In here, let's just declare a button with the title or with the intent label. Okay. For the intent, let's just use the previous declared shuffle articles intent. We just, we just uh, declared. And then pass the category dot raw value. Okay. For the label, let's just use a SF symbol system name. Let's pass shuffle. Okay. That's the SF symbol name. So where's go, where do we going to put this uh, button? So we're going to put it in here. Okay. So let's declare a H tag in here, and then let's move this category the text. Okay, inside the H tag, and then declare a spacer, and then after the spacer, we're just going to declare the shuffle articles button view passing the category luckily this uh, thumbnail view already have the category injected nice okay no need to do some kind of extra work okay we have injected the shuffle article button view with the intent so basically whenever the user right tap on this shuffle article button intent view right it will basically trigger that perform trigger that perform method that we have created before and it will reload the particular widget timelines okay what i mean by reload the particular widget timelines is i should remember that widget use some kind of timeline mechanism to reload right so in this case this article provider implement this intent timeline provider so let me explain to you in this uh, article provider basically this article provider will be refreshed every one hour right and it will hit the news API to fetch the latest articles from the newsapi.org. Okay. And then basically it will use it to uh, construct this article entry containing the fetched articles. Okay. This article entry itself is a timeline entry okay, used by the widget. So that is the background of what this article provider do. So when it reloads, so when the user taps on the uh, shuffle button articles view, it will basically tri trigger this. It will reload the intent timeline provider, making the got invoke, and it will basically fetch the articles again from news API. Basically, I want to we need to add some logic to shuffle the articles in here. Okay. So in here, I'm just going to 
basically now i think this page size is too small for us to shuffle the article so let's change this to page size and then in here i'm going to set the page size to 20. okay the type is going to be integer okay page size and in here basically i'm just also only for this example i'm going to add the shuffle logic in here right but yeah maybe that is not really good but for now just for the sake of this video i'm going to just shuffle it in here okay so let's just invoke shuffle here okay and now let's run and try this Let me bring the simulator. The left one is the completed project and the right one is the current project that we are working on. Okay, so let's go to the home screen and let's add a widget in here. Search for XCA, okay. And let me just add a large widget. Okay, so there you go. We have our widget. Nice, right? So let me tap on the shuffle button. Hmm. Yeah, it successfully shuffled the article, re triggering the timeline reloading. But if you see in the completed one in here, the transition is a bit smoother, right? Nice, right? If you see in the complete project. But in here, it is quite weird like it's not doing anything and then there is no transition animation okay so let's try to add some kind of enhancement in here right to make the transition better okay also i think we need to add a little bit of uh, improvement on how we fetch data so currently it always fetch the data every time this got reloads right so let's just add a very simple in memory mechanism right for this to basically fetch from my in memory cache Okay, for the transition, there's actually one API that we can use from Apple. So basically in this widget entry point, as simple as adding this invalidatable content. Okay, so when the user triggers an intent, it will basically trigger that it's like a subtle transition, right? So let's just add this. So when the user added intent, it will trigger a transition. But actually, we want to add some kind of caching. So let's do it as well, right? To make the transition also better, right? We don't want to refresh every time the user tab. So we can going to add some kind of caching in here. It's very simple in memory caching. So first, let's make this news API a static lab, okay? Because I'm going to also access it from the intent, the app intent. For now, I'm just uh, going to access it using the static. And now let's declare a struct in here. I said this in the struct. I'll just give the name cached article. Let's provide a timestamp for comparison whether the cache will be invalidated or not. And then let's declare an articles. Let's declare an articles with type of article widget model. So this is the representation of the article shown in the widget. Okay. In here, Inside the article profile, let's declare a static file cache and give it a let's assign a with a dictionary with the key of category enum and the value of cache article. Okay, let's initialize it with the empty value. So now inside this get articles, first let's declare a date. Okay, and then in the do, basically in here, I'm going to first declare a let articles with the type of article widget model okay I'm not going to assign it yet because I'm going to use if let in here so basically we're going to check if let cache articles self dot cache passing the category okay from the parameter the cache for this particular category axis I'm going to basically get it and then I'm going to basically compare current, the current timestamp is basically uh, minus the cache articles, the timestamp, okay, is basically uh, 
less than the so this is seconds right in ios less than 60 by 60 it means less than one hour right so in this case if the cache is still under one hour okay 300 uh 300 3, seconds okay forgot this in that case i'm just going to assign the articles from the cache okay so in case it already exceed the one hour from the the cache then i'm going to just basically invoke this this will basically fetch the article from news api again again okay and then in here i'm going to update the cache after the fetch for this particular category by initializing it with the current timestamp and the articles that we have fetched okay as simple as that and let me just oh sorry this should be date not data Let's also use this date in here. This as well for the entry. Build failed. Cannot find date in scope. Oh no. No, no, not that error. This is a different kind of error. Okay. So in here we can just use uh in here actually I want to make this also static remove the private static okay uh, this as well I'm gonna make this static and then I'm going to update this to use the article provider get articles okay let's try to build okay now the build succeeded let's go to the shuffle article intent as well to do some kind of enhancement in here so basically in here it should check the cache in case it's already inflated it will basically trigger the call to update the cache from here instead from that uh, real timeline provider i think i don't know i think this will provide a better transition right because this method itself is async okay so let's just do it declare a date and then in here let's declare the category that we got from the parameter raw value okay pass the category stuff the category and this is optional let's just provide the full value of general in case it's new and yeah basically in here i'm going to basically check the cache articles from article provider mm, this is not accessible right oh i know of course we are selecting this but actually to avoid any compilation issue i think i made a mistake before i think for the XCI news, I just need to uncheck this, okay? Because this is only accessible for the XCI news IS widget extension. Because this article provider itself is only built for the widget extension, okay? So please uncheck this XCI news from this shuffle articles intent, okay? That's one thing. So now we can access the cache. And now let's pass the category. And basically in here we can do the same comparison if the current date time interval since 1970 minus cached articles dot timestamp dot time interval since 1970 is greater than uh, 60 by 60 greater than one hour then it means that this cache is already invalid right we need to basically fetch a new one and update it so let's invoke try await article provider get articles for passing the category after we got the article let's update the cache inside the article provider the cache passing the category and initializing the timestamp date and the uh, articles okay so with this the re timelines itself that article provider in here will won't be performing the cache 
as it's already updating the cache from the intent itself okay uh i don't know why i get confused before i think this should be the dead right time because we already five dead, dead. we already declared this date right okay this is the current date okay now let's try this let's select x news again in here run it again okay let me go to the home screen and so this is the widget let's try to tap nice 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 this is nice right a very very subtle animation and whenever it's shuffle it tries to basically check from the cache if the cache still uh, valid still under one hour just get it from the cache shuffle it otherwise it will just fetch the data from the news api again so that's it for this video short video where we have add interactivity and bring our widgets to life by adding the shuffle news button that's it for this video and like the video if you like subscribe if you haven't and just want to say one thing let's keep on being a lifelong learner until the next one goodbye